Wigur or Uyghur slash Wir slash, Wigur Tilly, Wigurch, formerly known as Eastern Turkey, is a Turkic language with 8 to 11 million speakers, spoken primarily by the Uyghur people in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of Western China. Significant communities of Uyghur speakers are located in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, and various other countries have Uyghur speaking expatriate communities. Uyghur is an official language of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region and is widely used in both social and official spheres, as well as in print, radio, and television, and is used as a lingua franca by other ethnic minorities in Xinjiang. Uyghur belongs to the Karluk branch of the Turkic language family, which also includes languages such as Uzbek. Like many other Turkic languages, Uyghur displays vowel harmony and agglutination, lacks noun classes or grammatical gender, and is a left-branching language with subject-object-verb word order. More distinctly Uyghur processes include, especially in northern dialects, vowel reduction, and umlauting. In addition to influence of other Turkic languages, Uyghur has historically been influenced strongly by Persian and Arabic, and more recently by Mandarin Chinese and Russian. The Arabic-derived writing system is the most common and the only standard in China, although other writing systems are used for auxiliary and historical purposes. Unlike most Arabic-derived scripts, the Uyghur Arabic alphabet has mandatory marking of all vowels. Two Latin and one Cyrillic alphabet are also used, though to a much lesser extent. The Arabic and Latin alphabets both have 32 characters. The Middle Turkic languages are the direct ancestor of the Karluk languages, including Uyghur and the Uzbek language. Modern Uyghur is not descended from Old Uyghur, rather, it is a descendant of the Karluk language spoken by the Karakhanid Khanate. Western Uyghur is considered to be the true descendant of Old Uyghur, and is also called Neo-Uyghur. Modern Uyghur is not a descendant of Old Uyghur, but is descended from the Xa with Makron Ka with Makron and language described by Mahmud al Kashgari and Dunu al al-Turk. Modern Uyghur and Western Uyghur belong to entirely different branches of the Turkic language family, respectively the southeastern Turkic languages and the northeastern Turkic languages. The Western Uyghur language, although in geographic proximity, is more closely related to the Siberian Turkic languages in Siberia. Probably around 1077, a scholar of the Turkic languages, Mahmud al Kashgari from Kashgar in modern day Xinjiang, published a Turkic language dictionary and description of the geographic distribution of many Turkic languages. DWA with Makron and Ol Lugat al Turk, English, Compendium of the Turkic Dialects, Uyghur, Turkey Tila Diwani. The book, described by scholars as an extraordinary work, documents the rich literary tradition of Turkic languages, it contains folk tales, including descriptions of the functions of shamans, and didactic poetry, propounding moral standards and good behavior, besides poems and poetry cycles on topics such as hunting and love, and numerous other language materials. Middle Turkic languages, through the influence of Perso-Arabic after the 13th century, developed into the Chagatai language, a literary language used all across Central Asia until the early 20th century. After Chagatai fell into extinction, the standard versions of Uyghur and Uzbek were developed from dialects in the Chagatai-speaking region, showing abundant Chagatai influence. Uyghur language today shows considerable Persian influence as a result from Chagatai, including numerous Persian loan words. Robert Barclay Shaw and Christian missionaries such as George W. Hunter, missionary, Johannes Avataranian, Magnus Backlund, Nils Frederick Hoyger, Father Hendricks, Joseph Masrar, Anna Masrar, Albert Anderson, missionary, Gustav Albert, Stina Martinson, John Tornquist and Gostarakhet studied the Uyghur language and wrote works on it. Robert Barclay Shaw wrote in his book that it was Europeans at his time who called the language Uyghur while the native inhabitants of Yarkand and Kashgar did not call it by that name and only called it Turkey and Shaw wrote that the name Uyghur was a misnomer when referring to Kashgar's language. The historical term Uyghur was appropriated for the language that had been known as Eastern Turkey by government officials in the Soviet Union in 1922 and in Xinjiang in 1934. Sergi Malov was behind the idea of renaming Turkey to Uyghurs. Classification The Uyghur language belongs to the Karlik Turkic, 
or Karluk or Karluk, branch of the Turkic language family. It is closely related to Ainu, Lop, Eli Turkey, the extinct language Chagatay, the East Karluk languages, and more distantly to Uzbek, which is West Karluk. Early linguistic scholarly studies of Uyghur include Julius Klaproth's 1812 dissertation on language and script of the Uyghurs, Abhandlung Uber die Sprach und die Schrift der Uyghuren, which was disputed by Isaac Jacob Schmidt. In this period, Klaproth correctly asserted that Uyghur was a Turkic language, while Schmidt believed that Uyghur should be classified with Tengut languages. Dialects it is widely accepted that Uyghur has three main dialects, all based on their geographical distribution. Each of these main dialects have a number of sub-dialects which all are mutually intelligible to some extent. Central, spoken in an area stretching from Kumal towards south to Yarkand. Southern, spoken in an area stretching from Guma towards east to Charkalik. Eastern, spoken in an area stretching from Charkalik towards north to Konkal. The central dialects are spoken by 90% of the Uyghur-speaking population, while the two other branches of dialects only are spoken by a relatively small minority. Vowel reduction is common in the northern parts of where Uyghur is spoken, but not in the south. Status Uyghur is spoken by about 8 to 11 million people in total. In addition to being spoken primarily in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of Western China, mainly by the Uyghur people, Uyghur was also spoken by some 300,000 people in Kazakhstan in 1993, some 90,000 in Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan in 1998, 3,000 in Afghanistan and 1,000 in Mongolia, both in 1982. Smaller communities also exist in Albania, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Germany, Indonesia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sweden, Taiwan, Tajikistan, Turkey, United Kingdom, and the United States, New York City. The Uyghurs are one of the 56 recognized ethnic groups in China, and Uyghur is an official language of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, along with Standard Chinese. As a result, Uyghur can be heard in most social domains in Xinjiang, and also in schools, government, and courts. Of the other ethnic minorities in Xinjiang, those populous enough to have their own autonomous prefectures, such as the Kazakhs and the Kyrgyz, have access to schools and government services in their native language. Smaller minorities, however, do not have a choice and must attend Uyghur medium schools. These include the Zib, Tajiks, Dors, and Russians. About 80 newspapers and magazines are available in Uyghur, 5 TV channels and 10 publishers serve as the Uyghur media. Outside of China, Radio Free Asia and TRT provide news in Uyghur. Phonology The vowels of the Uyghur language are, in their alphabetical order, in Uyghur Latin script, A, E, E, I, O, O, U, U. There are no diphthongs in Uyghur and when two vowels come together, which occurs in some loan words, each vowel retains its individual sound. And disregarding vowel length distinction in current Uyghur orthographies. The Uyghur vowel system is characterized by the oppositions front versus back, high versus low and unrounded versus rounded. The Uyghur vowel system may be subcategorized on the basis of height, backness, and roundness. It has been argued, within a lexical phonology framework, that slash e slash has a back counterpart slash slash. And modern Uyghur lacks a clear differentiation i. Uyghur vowels are by default short, but some phonologists have argued that long vowels also exist because of historical vowel assimilation, above, and through loan words. Underlyingly long vowels would resist vowel reduction and devoicing, introduce non-final stress, and be analyzed as vj or vr before a few suffixes. However, the conditions in which they are actually pronounced as distinct from their short counterparts have not been fully researched. The high vowels undergo some tensing when they occur adjacent to alveolars, s, z, r, l, palatals, j, dentals, t, d, n, and post-alveolar affricates, t, d, e.g. chiric Iraq lamp, genu by n by southern, yutz jyz face, hundred, Suda Suda in slash it, the, water. 
Both end undergo apicalization after alveodental continuance in unstressed syllables, e.g. silar sl, r, u, plural, zian zjn harm. They are medialist after slash chi slash or before slash l slash, e.g. til tl tongue, zizmet chi zmt work, job, service. After velars, uvulars and slash f slash they are realized as e, e.g. jiram erm gram, Zel Kai Kai El Kiz etc. Nation, Fin Fen Fin. Between two syllables that contain a rounded back vowel each, they are realized as back, e.g. Kalimua QLM also his etc. arm. Any vowel undergoes laxing and backing when it occurs in uvular, slash Q slash, slash slash, slash Kai slash, and laryngeal, glottal, slash slash, slash slash, environments, e.g. Kiz QZ girl. Ketak QTQ yogurt, Keg Hay QZ paper, Kum QM sand, Kole QL convenient, Kun QN blood, Egg His E's mouth, Hisab SP number, He's S hunch, Hemra MRH partner, Hall wet, Hujam UM assault, Halka LQ ring. Lowering tends to apply to the non high vowels when a syllable final liquid assimilates to them, e.g. core C look, Boldy BLD he etc. became, Thursday S lesson. Tar T, R, narrow. Official Uyghur orthographies do not mark vowel length, and also not distinguish between slash slash, e.g., slash blm slash knowledge, and backslash slash, e.g., slash tlm slash my language. These two sounds are in complementary distribution, but phonological analyses claim that they play a role in vowel harmony and are separate phonemes. Slash e slash only occurs in words of non-Turkic origin and as the result of vowel raising. Uyghur has systematic vowel reduction, or vowel raising, as well as vowel harmony. Words usually agree in vowel backness, but compounds, loans, and some other exceptions often break vowel harmony. Suffixes surface with the rightmost back value in the stem, and slash e, slash are transparent, as they don't contrast for backness. Uyghur also has rounding harmony. Uyghur voiceless stops are aspirated word initially and intervocalically 34 the pairs slash p, b slash, slash t, d slash, slash k, slash, and slash q, slash alternate, with the voiced member devoicing in syllable final position, except in word initial syllables. This devoicing process is usually reflected in the official orthography, but an exception has been recently made for certain Perso-Arabic loans. Voiceless phonemes do not become voiced in standard Uyghur. Suffixes display a slightly different type of consonant alternation. The phoneme slash slash and slash slash anywhere in a suffix alternate is governed by vowel harmony, where slash slash occurs with front vowels and slash slash with back ones. Devoicing of a suffix initial consonant can occur only in the cases of slash d slash t, slash slash k, and slash slash q, when the preceding consonant is voiceless. Lastly, the rule that slash g slash must occur with front vowels and slash slash with back vowels can be broken when either k or q in suffix initial position becomes assimilated by the other due to the preceding consonant being such. Lone phonemes have influenced Uyghur to various degrees. Slash d slash and slash chi slash were borrowed from Arabic and have been nativized while slash slash from Persian less so. Slash f slash only exists in very recent Russian and Chinese loans, since Perso-Arabic, and older Russian and Chinese, slash f slash became Uyghur slash p slash. Perso-Arabic loans have also made the contrast between slash k, slash and slash q, slash phonemic, as they occur as allophones in native words, the former set near front vowels and the latter near a back vowels. Some speakers of Uyghur distinguish slash v slash from slash w slash in Russian loans, but this is not represented in most orthographies. Other phonemes occur natively only in limited contexts, i.e. slash h slash only in few interjections, slash d slash, slash slash, and slash slash rarely initially, and slash z slash only morpheme final. Therefore, the pairs asterisk slash t, d slash, Asterisk slash, slash, and asterisk slash s, z slash do not alternate. Phonotactics 
The primary syllable structure of Uyghur is CV, C, C. Uyghur syllable structure is usually CV or CVC, but CVCC can also occur in some words. When syllable coda clusters occur, CC tends to become CVC in some speakers especially if the first consonant is not a sonorant. In Uyghur, any consonant phoneme can occur as the syllable onset or coda, except for slash slash which only occurs in the onset and slash slash, which never occurs word initially. In general, Uyghur phonology tends to simplify phonemic consonant clusters by means of elision and epenthesis. Since the beginning of the literary tradition of Uyghur in the 5th century, it has been written in numerous different writing systems and continues to be. Unlike many other modern Turkic languages, Uyghur is primarily written using an Arabic alphabet, although a Cyrillic alphabet and two Latin alphabets also are in use to a much lesser extent. Unusually for an alphabet based on the Persian, full transcription of vowels is indicated. Among the Arabic family of alphabets, only a few, such as Kurdish, distinguish all vowels. Uyghur is an agglutinative language with a subject-object-verb word order. Nouns are inflected for number and case, but not gender and definiteness like in many other languages. There are two numbers, singular and plural, and six different cases, nominative, accusative, dative, locative, ablative and genitive. Verbs are conjugated for tense, present and past, voice, causative and passive, aspect, continuous, and mood, e.g. ability. Verbs may be negated as well. Lexicon The core lexicon of the Uyghur language is of Turkic stock, but due to different kinds of language contact through the history of the language, it has adopted many loan words. Kazakh, Uzbek, and Chagatai are all Turkic languages which have had a strong influence on Uyghur. Many words of Arabic origin have come into the language through Persian and Tajik, which again have come through Uzbek, and to a greater extent, Chagatai. Many words of Arabic origin have also entered the language directly through Islamic literature after the introduction of the Islamic religion around the 10th century. Chinese in Xinjiang and Russian elsewhere had the greatest influence on Uyghur. Loan words from these languages are all quite recent, although older borrowings exist as well, such as borrowings from Dungan, a Mandarin language spoken by the Dungan people of Central Asia. A number of loanwords of German origin have also reached Uyghur through Russian. Below are some examples of loanwords which have entered the Uyghur language.